Hello, this is Dr. Keith Miller, and in this video, we'll be looking at groundwater, particularly mapping out the groundwater table and using that to help understand groundwater movement. So what we can do is we can contour the groundwater table. Now you've already had experience with contour maps and making topographic maps. And in that case, the topographic lines represented points of equal elevation of the land surface. We can do exactly the same thing with the groundwater table. So you can make a contour map of the water table. So we'll be doing that and then we'll be using that to interpret groundwater flow. And you will be doing these kind of exercises in your lab. So let's get started. Okay, so here is a map. Might be hard to see the, uh, the numbers on here. But here is stream, converging stream. Stream is flowing in this direction. Here is the ocean. So we know that the stream is flowing from the top to the bottom. And we have points, just like you did with the topographic maps, except these points represent <clears throat> the elevation of the water table at that point. Now, in the exercise that you'll be doing in your lab, uh, rather than these numbers being the elevation of the water table, they are the depth to the water table. So from the surface down to the water table. So in that case, when the numbers are uh, large, that means that the water table is deep. So that's a low place. When the numbers are small, that means the water table is close to the surface so the water table is high. But in this case, the numbers actually do represent the elevation of the water table. So high numbers represent high water table, low numbers represent low water table. And the important thing to remember is that standing water bodies, whether rivers or lakes, are actually places where the water table is exposed at the surface. So the level of a stream bed, that is the water table, or the level of a lake is the water table at that point. So in this particular map shows numbers along the stream. So that's the elevation of the stream going from the top of the map down to sea level. <clears throat> and so that is also the elevation of the water table at that point. So using this information, we can make a contour map. So here is a contour map made from that map. In a little bit, I'll be uh, drawing a, a contour map uh, for you, but just using this now to understand how they work. So here is the same map. These are now contour, li uh, contour lines of the water table. This is not elevation of the land surface this is elevation of the water table. And I've chosen a contour interval of 20 feet. So each one of these lines represents an increment of 20 feet of the water table. <clears throat> and what you see is the level of the water table drops as it approaches the stream, as it approaches sea level. And generally, the shape of the water table is relatively similar to the, safe, uh, the shape of the topography of the land surface. So where the land surface is high, the water table is high. Where the land surface is low, the water table is low. Now, it's important to know that water flows and groundwater flows down the slope of the water table. So you can imagine just like it was a landscape, and so the groundwater flows from where the water table is high to where it's low. So we can draw lines that represent the flow lines of groundwater. And what you do is you just draw them perpendicular to these contour lines. So I'll just draw a few in so you get an idea. So so just keep the line perpendicular to the 
cont the contour lines. So that gives you an idea how the water is flowing. Just dr keep drawing these perpendicular to the lines, to the contour lines. And notice that the water, groundwater is flowing toward the stream. So groundwater always flows towards a stream or a water body and will discharge uh, into that stream or water body. So again, these arrows represent the movement of groundwater down the slope toward, uh, in this case, toward the stream. Okay, so let's make a contour map now. And this is an actual location. Um, so this is a, a real situation. And again, these uh, numbers represent uh, elevation of the water table. So we can use them directly. And the first thing to do is just like with topo maps, to see what the range of elevation here. So it's relatively small, it goes from uh, around 40 or so up to about 90 feet. And so I'm uh, gonna choose a, a contour interval of five feet. So you want enough contour lines so that you can um, visualize what's going on. Too few and it doesn't give you enough detail. So, and you can either start uh, at the high point or the low point, it doesn't matter, but you should work one way or the other. Either start at the lowest elevations and work higher or start at the high elevations and work low. So, uh, so I'm gonna start with the low. So lowest elevation is 40. So here we have some low 40 values. So I have to stay inside those. So just like making a topo map. So here's 43, 44, so I have to be inside of that. And here are low 40s over here. So again, just like a topo line, your lines are of equal elevation. So all the points on one side are higher and all the points in the other are lower. So that's 40, then we need 45. Well, here's a bunch of 44s, so we know the line has to be just to the outside of those. And here's an actual 45, so it goes right through that point. There's another 45. And now this has to intersect the stream. Okay, just like your topo lines do. So here's a 48, so it says right near the stream that the stream elevation is about 48 there. So it has to be inside of that. So that says that right about there is the stream is at 45 feet. Now we come down the other side, it's in order of 46. So there's a 45, so we go right through that line. And here's a 46. Right. So now we have 50. So here's another 50. Here's a 49, so we go close to that. And then somewhere off the page up here. And up here, there's 50. Up 
can go the outside of that, these two 48s. So that's about all we can do on this side of the map. So we have 55. There's a 55 point, we go through that. 56 is above that. There's a 55 up here. Then 60. Well, here's a 60. There's 59 and 58, so you know the line goes close to those points. And then somehow off the map. Then 65. Well, here's a 65. A 64. There's 62 and 72, so we have to go in between those. So we keep going like that. So here's 70. There's 71. Down here is a 70. And then off the map. Then 75. So all we have is 70, 79, 72, 85. So we have to go in there somewhere. So there's 75, 80, there's a 79, so it goes close to that. And then, uh, so that's 80, then 85, there's an 85 point, so it has to go through that. Notice how the lines here are getting much closer. Then 90, well here's a 90. So this is a high point in the water table. There's 96, so 95 just goes a little bit below that. So there is our map of the water table. Now, what you notice, again, is just like in a topograph map, where <clears throat> the lines are closer together, that means that the water table is more steep. Over here, the contour lines are farther apart. That means that the water table is much more shallow. And right here suggests that the water table is pretty flat in this area right here. Also, again, water is going to flow down slope perpendicular to these lines. So the water is flowing down this slope of the water table toward the stream and down this slope on this side toward the stream, which is flowing from the top of the map to the bottom of the map. All right, now, Notice that there are these two dark um, circles here. Those represent wells. Now, this map was done before these wells were pumped. So the next map I'm going to show you is the same area with elevations to the water, to, to the water table or, or elevations of the water table taken after those wells were pumped. And here is that same map. This part of the map is relatively simple, similar, but notice there's quite a bit of change right here. And here are the two wells. And these numbers now are considerably um, smaller, lower than they were before. And notice there's a circle here now. So this is a depression. So your water table is sloping down here, and now there's this kind of a hole in the water table. And that's called a cone of depression. And they're very important because every time you draw water out of a well, you depress the water table where that well is. So this is now showing the cone of depression around these two wells. So before, in the, the previous map, uh, this did not exist. So once you pump the water out, the water table is falling around those pumped wells. And in your lab exercise, there will be a similar kind of problem.
So what I want to do now is, lastly, is look at this map. Uh, and this is another exercise, kind of exercise that you'll be doing, another contour map. This is a different kind of contour map. In this case, what you're contouring is the amount of pollutants in the water. Again, you can use a contour map to show all kinds of different types of data. So in this case, this is again a real situation. These dots represent wells, and those wells are sampled, and they sample how much of a particular pollutant is in that well, and that gives you a number. And then you can contour those pollutant levels. And that's what this is. So these contours are contours of a particular contaminant called TCE and a certain um, concentrations that are called micrograms per liter. And so you can contour that. And notice that the numbers keep getting bigger up to here where they're very, very high. So this is the source of the contamination. And notice that the, cont the, the contaminant levels are spread out in what's called a plume. In other words, they don't spread out kind of symmetrically around the area of contamination, the source of contamination, but they're swept in a certain direction in a plume. And that is because of groundwater flow. So this plume tells you the direction that the groundwater is moving. So you'll also have a problem in your lab in which you do the same thing, in which you draw a contour map, not of the water table, not of topography, but of concentrations of pollutants. And this is done all the time. This is very important for determining the extent of pollution how the, how the, the pollution, uh, groundwater pollution is traveling through the system. And it also provides uh, indications of how to remediate or uh, resolve that uh, contamination problem. So again, um, lots of different ways to use contour lines and you'll be practicing several of these in this particular lab.